Hispanic Heritage Month honors the culture and contributions of both Hispanics and Latinos in America. We're exploring this morning their journeys and challenges in starting their own businesses and the future of their success. We're also going to dive into Florida's new immigration law and the impacts on owners and employees. Let's go On the Record. From WPBF 25, this is On the Record with Todd McDermott and Nathalie Pozo. Good morning and welcome to On the Record. I'm Todd McDermott. And I'm Nathalie Pozo. Joining us today is Noel Martinez, President and CEO of the Palm Beach North Chamber of Commerce. Noel, bienvenido. Bienvenido. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. So let's go right into it. Can you first provide just an overview of the economic landscape here in Florida for Hispanic-owned businesses? Yeah, so let's start with the United States, right? So according to the Small Business Administration, there are over 5 million Hispanic businesses in the country. Right? That's an $800 billion economic impact. Right? But if you come to Florida, right, we're number two in the nation for Hispanic-owned businesses. Those Hispanic-owned businesses, and this is all according to the Florida Chamber, this isn't Noel's made up numbers, right? Mm -hmm. They have a $90 billion economic impact. Right? So if you kind of like focus in on Palm Beach County, in Palm Beach County, if you think back at the last census, the Hispanic population grew by over 20%. Right, that's a big, big number. We became the fastest growing minority and the largest minority in Palm Beach County. According to the Hispanic Chamber, we have over 10,000 businesses here in Palm Beach County that are Hispanic owned. So if you think about that, that's a huge number. It's a big number, That's a yeah. big economic impact. And it's yeah, so impactful on the community as a whole, but obviously at the same time, we're talking about new businesses uh, coming in, people trying to do a startup, what are some of the, the challenges that an entrepreneur is going to face in starting their business? Yeah, so if you think about it, my parents are Cuban immigrants, right? They came from Cuba because they wanted to give us more. So imagine going to another country and you really don't know the, can the, the language, right? You might not even know it at all. The language, the laws, just the way that everything yeah, is done. Business yeah, business regulations, right. nothing, right? So now you've got to figure all that out. And on top of that, you have to deal with all the other issues every other entrepreneur has, right? affordable housing for your employees. Where are my employees gonna live? Insurance costs, you guys just did a show on insurance. Think about that, what that does to a business. There are so many other issues that other businesses are, that are fighting and it's happening every day. One in four businesses started in the United States are started by, Hispanic, by a Hispanic entrepreneur. So think about it, it's happening a lot. Now at the same time, because of the challenges we talked about and so many others, it can be very difficult. A lot of those businesses fail. You know, startups generally fail, but there are resources, there are programs that really can make a difference. What are the crucial, crucial resources people can draw on to make sure the business succeeds? The, the, there are a ton out there, right? So I would start with your local municipality, right? A lot of municipalities out there have all kinds of different programs and grant programs for minority-based businesses. The Florida State Hispanic Chamber has a program called Access to Capital Florida. If you're looking to get capital and you're a minor minority-owned business, I would definitely recommend you go there. And then of course here at home, Florida Atlantic University has a small business development resource center that has all kinds of tools and resources to help you start your business, whether it's mentorship programs or um, certifications or training seminars. They even have um, you know, a consultant that could take a look at your business and help you scale it. So Noel, let's talk about you know, maybe someone who may be watching who says, hey, I wanna start up a business. What advice would you give them? I'll tell you this, the first thing that I would say, and I know this is funny because I'm a chamber guy, right? But join your local chamber. We have some amazing chambers here in Palm Beach County. We've got a great Hispanic chamber here in Palm Beach County, right? The other thing that I would say is go find a mentor. We all have them, right? Big business, small businesses, nonprofits, everyone has a mentor. We could all use someone to help tell us the truth when we really don't want to hear it, right? And then we could always have, there's people out there that'll help you navigate through something that they've already been through. So get yourself a mentor, and that, that's probably the most important thing that you could do. And that mentor too, because it can just be so intimidating, right? To start something new and, and you think that maybe you're the only one going through that. But when you find someone who can mentor you, who can guide you, they can relate to what you're going through and you can maybe say, hey, I'm, I'm not alone in this, you know, in what I'm feeling and thinking. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. And how do we do a better job at getting the word out with all these resources that are available and the idea of getting a mentor, not being out there on your own, 
Can we do a better job at making sure that gets out to people? Absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we try. You know, we really try to get their information. That's part of what Chambers of Commerce do, right? They, they try to provide resources to all our small businesses. But as a community, we could do a better job because, look, let's face it. We just talked about a lot of stats. There are a lot of people moving to a lot of immigrants moving to South Florida. Why? Because we live where everybody else wants to live. Mm -hmm. And this is a great place to start a business. So we've got to talk about that because there are a lot of resources out there that these people could take advantage of. And Noel, what about representation as well? You know, when you're driving down and you know, you maybe see that that sign of that business in, in Spanish or maybe it has a, a Spanish name in it, you know, um, I, I would think that that just provides inspiration to people as well. Inspiration, it's something to be proud of, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you know as, a, as a Cuban American, my parents came to the States. You want to see people be successful. I want to see my people become successful. So yes, I mean, it feels good when you see that and we want to make sure to help. And getting that extra hand up, not a hand out from others who've had success is really a key to, to growing Hispanic businesses. Absolutely, 100%. And the chamber can just again help out with all of just like the, the the benefits and the programs in place because it's it's a lot. There's a lot of them out there. Just people are just not aware of. Absolutely, them. you know there are a lot of chambers in Palm Beach County. You know we have a lot of amazing chambers of commerce and a lot of amazing business organizations out there that want to see our small businesses succeed. All right, Noel Martinez, muchísimas gracias. Muchas gracias. Okay, today. and I think the last message is join the chamber. Yeah. Join the chamber. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the right. plug. Well, thank you. Coming up, we look closer at the grant money and the workshops and the seminars available to people to help them boost their business. That's when On the Record continues. You're watching On the Record on WPBF 25. And joining us now is Virginia Savieto, community advocate in Palm Beach County for more than 20 years and works closely with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Palm Beach County. This week, the Hispanic Chamber, in partnership with Office Depot and the Urban League of Palm Beach County, gave out several grants to small businesses. So, Virginia, tell us a little bit about this program. It's called Elevate Together and how the people are chosen. Well, this is exciting because um, these are um, small grants of $6,000 each. So they really help the business community. Uh, they, um, they can buy different uh, types of like marketing, they can do um, technology, they can advance their business with financial advice. Um, so it's amazing because they can use these grants to do things that otherwise maybe they, were, they would be stuck. So you, you actually were telling us that um, you are in marketing, so you know just how critical marketing is when it comes to you know starting up a business or maybe just promoting your business. So those $6,000, I mean, it really goes a long way. Yeah, marketing for me is my, my passion, design, marketing, and branding. So business, when they want to thrive, they actually need to look at their marketing strategy, what they do with the money, how, where are they standing, you know, what's their strengths, what are their weaknesses, how are they going to get out of where they are. Even, you know, even if they're in business for a day or 10 years, they need to come back and look at their business. So how do they do it? Through marketing strategies, they have to look at the whole unit. Have they grown? Are they where they want to go? Do they, um, do they want to open up more services, bring more uh, products, uh, the target market? Is it the same as when they started? And all that takes money and effort. I always say that you may have a PhD in psychology or you know, a master's in other types of uh, fields, but what do you actually know about marketing? So let somebody that actually you know, learn that to teach you and to guide you in your business. Now, if I'm just getting into a business, though, I may not understand exactly what marketing even means, but the Hispanic Chamber also has seminars, programs to get give you an idea of what that is. When you say marketing, what's a specific uh, task you could take on to help your business? Yeah, th th I'm very excited because next year they're going to have a whole blown up schedule of um, lunch and learns, workshops, seminars, 
All of these are going to empower people. It doesn't matter where you are in your business level, they're going to help you because like you said, you may not know much, but having the right um, you know, website, your social media, what's the language that you're using to come out? Who's your target market? Again, who do you want to sell to? Are you doing the right things? Having a website does not mean that you're going to be successful right out the bat. So it's very important that you invest, that you come to the uh, Chamber of Commerce that you ask questions. I usually say that um, failing is not a problem of lack of resources, but it's lack of resourcefulness. You know, do you know who knows something that you may need? Or do you know how to ask questions? What questions should you ask? And, and when I started my community um, adventure 20 years ago, I didn't know, I actually started with the Chamber of Commerce. And I would shake hands and I'm like, I'm Virginia Savieto, what can I do for the community? What should I do? What can I do? And I had no idea what even to ask. Yeah. But people said, you know, talk to that person, grab their business card. You need to know how to network. One-on-one -on -one is very important. And we take it for granted that people should know how to network, but they don't know. So be knowledgeable about, about how to present yourself, have a business card, follow up, call people because at the end of the day, it's building relationships and the chamber can actually do that. So you, if you're Hispanic and non-Hispanic, please come to the chamber. We love to help everyone, but like, you know, we have plenty of chambers. Right. So really we great can advice. Virginia Savieto, Sorry. they know who you are now. And I'm sure <laughs> you inspired a lot of people today. Thanks for going on the record with us today. You're welcome. And coming up here on the record, a personal experience from a local business owner that's ahead. Welcome back to On the Record to Explore Business Ownership during Hispanic Heritage Month. Joining us is Luis Pastor, owner of Elite Printing in West Palm Beach. Luis, thank you so much for being here with us today. Luis was born in Venezuela, came here to South Florida in 2016 to start his business. And in 2020, he received one of those $10,000 grants from Office Depot that we were just hearing about. So Luis, first of all, congratulations just on all of, all of your success over the past few years. Talk to us about how um, you use the investor's visa in your business. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, the investor visa, it's a visa that's uh, a treaty between the United States and some countries. Okay, even though I'm from Venezuela, I have a Spanish nationality and that's how I could get an investor's visa. Because with Venezuela, with the Venezuelan nationality, you can't. And how does okay? that visa work? That visa, it uh, allows you to have a business, make an investment, and of course, live here while you maintain the business. The business has to be profitable, has to have employees, and uh, pay your taxes. <laughs> well, I'm sure a lot of people talk to you. You are a successful businessman who's able to do this. But a lot of people, I'm sure, say, Luis, how did you do this? And what were the challenges? What was the journey like to get where you are today? Well, I, I really had to learn as I was going, because it's very different to do business here than back in Venezuela, okay? Uh, I, the first thing I did, I joined the Hispanic Chamber uh, and I've been a member since I got here basically and it's helped me a lot. One of the things was that, that grant through the chamber that I got uh, from, uh, from Office Depot, which helped us a lot at, at the time. It was right after COVID and I didn't want to lay off my employees. So that helped me to keep them, okay? And then I was able to make a small investment in the machine to do another things uh, for the business. Was there any other hurdle that you were surprised by in trying to begin your business? Uh, yeah, honestly, uh, from the door in, I know the business. Uh, that's what I've done all my life and print the business for the last 45 years. But the struggle was uh, from the door out, trying to get new clients, uh, trying to get customers. Uh, I tried a door-to-door -door, uh, strategy and it didn't work really. I tried that for about six months. I never got anything out of it. Uh, but then through the chamber, I started to get uh, referrals and that's how I started to get clients. 
and the business started to grow, and it's been growing steady ever since. I mean, no success story doesn't have stories of challenges and hurdles along yeah. the way, right? I mean, Luis, here in this country, less than less than 10 years, and look at everything you're, you're doing. What advice do you have for, for other people? Well, uh, you have to focus. You, you can't go jumping around. You just have to focus on what you want to do and set yourself a goal. Okay, that's what I do every year. So this year I have to sell that, you know, whatever, how many dollars. And work hard, but work smart. Okay, don't, if you work, I don't know, 80 hours a week, uh, maybe you're not doing things right. So you have to find another way to do it. And of course, uh, join the chamber. Uh, there are many chambers of commerce, and that's, the best way to meet people, okay, and to get business out of it. Are you okay. finding you're an inspiration to other small business owners now with all the success you've had since 2016? Well, I'm not sure if I should call myself someone that inspires. But you can if you'd like. Uh, all right. We will yeah. do it for him, <laughs> yeah, right? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. But uh, it can be done, okay? It's difficult to leave your country at 45 years or 50 years of age and start a new life in another country. And, but it can be done. All right. Okay. Truly an inspiration, Luis. Thank, Thank you. you. Luis Pastor of Elite Printing, thanks again for joining us. Thank you very much. For On the Record. We looked into Florida's new immigration law. A local Hispanic leader goes on the record to discuss how it affects business owners. Welcome back. Senate Bill 1718, what is known as Florida's anti-immigration law, requires employers with more than 25 employees to check their immigration status. The federal E-Verify system allows employers to check the eligibility of employees to legally work in the U.S. If they don't comply, employers face fines of $1,000 a day until they provide proof that the worker is legal. You can also be fined and lose your state license to operate for knowingly employing an undocumented person. The law that took effect July 1st also requires hospitals that accept Medicaid to check the patient's citizenship status. And driver's licenses issued in other states to undocumented people are no longer valid in the state of Florida. This makes Florida the largest state in the country uh, to do full E-Verify for employment. And that's important because if people are going to come if they get benefits, and so what you want to do is say there's not benefits for coming illegally. Uh, you're either here as a native or you come legally. Joining us now to go on the record, Lazaro Murr, founder of the Latino Coalition of the Palm Beaches. When this new state immigration law passed, Laz, a lot of people were pretty worried. A lot of business owners thought that this could really hurt their bottom line. Maybe they'd be unable to hire employees. Now that we see it in effect in some fashion, parts of it are... Uh, still being litigated. The smallest businesses, are they really seeing any impact because of this? None whatsoever, because one of the things that uh, we have is misinformation to the Hispanic community. We have 10,000 small businesses, uh, Hispanic owned businesses in Palm Beach County. A majority of them don't have more than 25 employees, and they are exempted from this particular legislation. Now, let me be honest, I don't agree with everything that's included in SB 1718, but as it relates to small businesses, a majority of them are not impacted. There's also an exception for independent contractors. You keep hearing about the construction industry being impacted, okay? Most of the construction industry is operated by subcontractors, and those subcontractors have independent contractors. They are not included in 1718. We just need to get the information out there so our community continues to work together. But more importantly, this is something that needs to be addressed at the federal level. If it was addressed at the federal level, governors like DeSantis and 22 other governors around the United States wouldn't have to take these tax measures. They could be more constructive. They could be more cooperative. Nobody is against immigration. What we want is fair and equitable legal immigration in the United States. 
And Lázaro, you've said before that the conversation needs to be pushed in a different direction while focusing on Latinos who are job creators. That is correct. Uh, you know, Hispanic community contributes $3.2 trillion to our economy. Nobody's against immigration, all right? If we were a nation, we'd be the fifth largest GPN in the world. So what we need to do is at the federal level, fix this issue so that we can all come here legally and work and contribute and pay taxes. That's all we want to do. I came here on a shrimp boat in 1965, all right? So we want to all work together. Well, I think you've been able to listen to some of these conversations this morning. From your perspective, having come here in the mid-60s, do you have an overall message to both the business community and the community at large about helping each other and about growing the community through better business? Absolutely. Uh, we are uh, the fastest growing business starters in the nation. We want to be able to reach out, have our voice heard at the federal level, have the immigration issue put behind us so that we can all contribute to the, our economy. That's all I'm suggesting. All right, Lázaro, thank you so much for being here with us this morning on, on the record. It was fantastic. Thanks again, and thank, thank you, you to all our guests today. We are so glad you joined us today. You can also watch this morning's On the Record and every episode on WPBF.com and on our free WPBF 25 news app. We encourage you also to be part of our discussion each Sunday at 10 a.m. Matter of fact, with Soledad O'Brien is next. We'll see you again next Sunday.